Do not expect to see former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson flanking the president, Mr. Romney, despite the best efforts of his attorneys. The libertarian candidate is that third man, and he has now filed an antitrust lawsuit saying it's a conspiracy. He's not invited to the debates. Gary Johnson joins me now. Good day to you, Governor. Nice to see you again. Hey, thank you for having me on, Alex. Well, before we talk about this lawsuit, because I do want to get to that, I want to put out the numbers here. Among likely voters, nationally speaking, when you're in the mix with President Obama and Mitt Romney, you get 6% of the vote. That is the best you have polled nationally. But the bar is set by the Presidential Election Commission. It stands at 15%. So do you expect to get there at any point? Well, um, let me let me state the obvious here, Alex. Do you hear my name six times for every time you hear Obama or Romney's name a hundred times? No. <laughs> you hear my name one time for every 5,000 times you hear these guys. If I were just being given uh, that six-time mention for every hundred times these guys were mentioned, you know what? I wouldn't be at six. I'd be at 11. I'd be at 18. I'd be at next president of the United States. But... It is what it is, and when it comes to the Presidential Debate Commission, look, uh, the Presidential Debate Commission are made up of Republicans and Democrats. They're a private organization. They're not a governmental organization. They have no interest whatsoever in seeing a third party on stage. All right. So since it appears uh, Wednesday night will not happen for you, after that debate, there are two more. That's October 16th as well as the 23rd. Might you make any of those? Well, we're going to go down kicking and screaming on all this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to offer up a, a prediction. Whether Obama or Romney are reelected uh, we're, uh, or are elected, uh, we're going to have a heightened police state. We're going to find ourselves in a continued state of perpetual war, military interventions. We're going to find ourselves with continued spending and uh, debt that's not sustainable. Okay, this antitrust loss that you have there, what is your best argument to get you up on stage with... Uh the other two candidates? Well, just that uh, when my name is included, t take uh, isidewith.com. I don't know how many uh, watching have actually got online and with three and a half million people taking this 36 questionnaire that determines the next president of the United States. But uh, as of today, in a three and a half million person sample, um, I've got 230 electoral votes. Uh, Obama has 330. Romney has zero. Um, and I think the issue with Obama is not what he says. I think that what he says is there's just nothing to disagree with. I just argue that the reality doesn't match up at all with the well, words. Well, 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 look, here's the thing. I, I side with dot com. I, I've never heard of it before. I know three and a half million people may have. But you have to say that it's online and that can be skewed. So if that's your best argument, Gary, does, do, I mean, honestly, I mean, what's the likelihood you're going to be up on the stage? Well, uh, the... Not not good, Alex. This is a stacked deck. I mean, uh, look, that's just speaking honestly. That's the reality. There is no vested interest by the two party system to see another party on, uh, on on the debate stage. This was established after Perot, really, to prevent a Perot from ever being on stage again. And if I were on stage, uh, that's the only opportunity, really, I have to actually win this election. And I've told you before, one of my real concerns is peaking too early. So, uh you know, we're, we're hanging in there. All right. Well, I should say also the Election Commission has set that bar that you've got to be getting 15 percent of the vote. And right now you're getting 6 percent. So that is the bar that you need to surpass to get on that stage. Um, when you were removed from the poll that I mentioned earlier, the Obama-Biden ticket led the Romney-Ryan ticket by just five points. Check it out with you on the poll. The lead is nine for the president. Now, your name, Gary, is going to be on the ballot in at least 47 states. Do you agree that you're going to be pulling more votes from Mitt Romney? No, actually, uh, you know, these polls are all subject to a margin of error. But uh, really, it's from both sides. Uh, I'm more liberal than Obama when it comes to a lot of social issues. I'm certainly more conservative than Romney when it comes to dollars and cents. I think that's where the majority of people in this country fall in. And who's being... Uh, which party is representing what I think are the majority of Americans uh, that are fiscally responsible and socially accepting? Well, that's just the philosophy. I'm going to argue, I continue to argue, that I have a resume that not only suggests can I do this job, but I can really do a good job at it. You know, there's a poll that I saw in Ohio in which your presence turns a one-point lead by President Obama into a seven-point lead for the president. So, Gary, would it be gratifying, at least for you, if you just ended up being a spoiler in this election? 
Well, I hope to get labeled as a spoiler. That would just be more attention for what I'm having to say. And what I'm having to say is, look, let's not bomb Iran. That would be a third voice on stage. Let's get out of Afghanistan tomorrow. Uh, um, bring the troops home. That would be a third voice on stage. Let's end the drug war. That would be a third voice on stage. Let's balance the federal budget tomorrow. That would be a, a third voice on stage. Let's eliminate income tax, corporate tax, abolish the IRS. Let's replace all that with one federal consumption tax. That's the answer to America. American jobs. The, hmm. It's the voice that's not going to get heard. I'm just going to suggest that the debates are going to be tweedledee, tweedledum, elect either one, and it's going to just be more of the same. Can, can I ask you, had you run from the beginning as a libertarian as opposed to a Republican, might you have then been on stages and debates where they had at points nine Republican candidates and you weren't one of them? Well, I was, uh, I'm going to continue to argue that um, I was just excluded from the process very unfairly, uh, but it is what it is. Um, I thought it was going to really be hard to uh, marginalize two people on stage talking about the, the, talking about the issues, and that was Ron Paul and myself, but I didn't find myself marginalized. I just found myself excluded. In December, uh, I look in my crystal ball. I didn't see Ron Paul becoming the nominee of the Republican Party. So where does the voice go hmm. for liberal freedom? Where does the yeah. voice go that offers up a third choice in all these categories? You know, Gary, I, I have to ask you, you are getting 6% of the vote. So... Could you consider, could, could, I mean, uh, right now, but are you in, in polls, but could you consider running for a different office where some of your ideas might be able to be implemented because you do have some good ideas? What about Senate or something like that? So the Senate, the Senate is just a job of belling up to the trough. That's the root of our all of our evils is Congress that uh, go to Washington to bring home the bacon. And at the end of the day, I think that uh, senators, Congress people get reelected on the basis of how they do when it comes to bringing home the bacon. And that's the problem is this is a mutual sacrifice on the part of all of us. I think as the gravity of what's facing this country, Democrats and Republicans right now arguing over who's going to spend more money on Medicare when we have to slash Medicare spending or we're going to find ourselves without any health care at all. We're going to find ourselves in a monetary collapse, which is going to be the result of borrowing and printing to the tune of $47 yeah. we spend. Well, Gary Johnson, i got to tell you, you're a voice that we very much appreciate hearing from on this network and on my shows. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.